We have to talk about the success of that song. I was at radio at the time, or actually doing uh, music videos at the time, and it was a five week number one. Yeah. More importantly, I think it rose to number one like in 11 weeks, which is yeah. just crazy. All it right. blew up. Well, that was back, you know, I think I'm one of the a handful of artists that can say that we're from that almost like the end of that era when that kind of thing was happening for people where mm -hmm. we made real, uh, you know, albums and album releases. And, you know, I was still going to the, the Walmart parking lots for the in-store signings, you know, that kind of faded away really shortly after, uh, you know, me and a handful of others uh, came on scene. It's not that way anymore. No, it isn't. But I I want to give credit to this, your songwriting as, as one of the co-writers with John Rich, yes. your good buddy, and we're going to talk about John in just a bit. But I mean, the song not only, I think, was career defining for you, but it really was a pop culture phenomenon. I mean, I people, hope, yeah. everybody was wearing redneck woman shirts. I remember when you walked into our old studios and all the girls on the staff had the yeah. shirt. Homemade. And it just, yeah, yeah it was just for a song or for a word rather that could have negative connotations. Yeah. I think women wore it like a badge of honor. It was time. It was just that it was that season where I think for a little while country music and especially the females in country music had gotten um, a little bit on the softer side, you know, mm. and uh, I think that there was just a, a bunch of girls like me out there that were screaming, that's not my life. That's not how I live. That's not how I look. That's not how I talk. And uh, they were just ready for something that spoke for them. Yeah, absolutely. And for you, I, I mean, I don't even have to ask you, you know, how you came to write it or I mean, because it really described who you were, your position, I guess, in life and, yeah. and your your stance. Well, I don't think uh, the day that John and I sat down to write that song, I don't think we had any idea uh, what it turned what could have turned into. I think mm -hmm. we were just trying to write a song that was as honestly me as we could write. Um, I knew, like back in my hometown, of course, I knew that there were a bunch good. like me. But I, I don't think that either of us could have imagined um, how many women all over the world were right. ready to pro you know, proclaim their, their rednekedness. <laughs> Absolutely. And this to be your first single, of course, like I said, 20 years ago, it was 2004. You come out of the gate with this song. Mm -hmm. I, you know, interviewing you back then, I you know, I know what we see and what you're feeling could be two different things. Yeah. Was it just a hold on tight? It and was. And it, it was also scary for um, the label, I think. Mm. It was the fans that, that really, really drove they it. were calling and, and, and saying, if you don't play this song, I'm not listening to your station anymore. So, mm. you know, I have to, it's always been the fans. They, they, they gave me the opportunity. They opened the door for me and they've kept me here. And so it's always been them.